Hey everybody, I uh, hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying the weather that we've been having. It's been beautiful. Um, and I hope you're just making it, you know? it's This is a tough time for us. Um, but hopefully we're, on, we're at the end of it. Hopefully we're getting out of the woods. And hopefully we'll be back together soon, uh, worshiping together and enjoying each other's company. I know that I am extremely ready for that, and I'm excited for that. So for for the today's lesson or tonight's lesson... We're going to be looking at the water of life, um, and I did not mean to uh, to do the water of life at, in conjunction with the tree of life, which I did the last time I taught, but it just kind of happened. I was reading a couple articles, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do the water of life. I think it's, it's appropriate. It's very interesting. So here we are. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it, and we'll have some good discussion questions when we get on the Zoom. So, water is essential for life, and we all know this. We've we've been thirsty before. Our body naturally tells us that, hey, you need to go drink water. You need to. Um, it's essential. Our body knows it. We know it. It's just a key to living. It's probably the the second most important thing behind oxygen for our bodies because it's it does so many things for us. A person can only live maybe a couple, two or three days, maybe. Um, without water. Food, you can go a week, two weeks, as long as you have water. But if you don't have water for two to three days, that's, I mean, it's game over. That's Those are essential for life. And you know this, if you've ever been extremely thirsty, if you've ever been in a situation where you've just been dying of thirst, that you you know. You know that without water, it's you're miserable, and I don't. I don't know if you've ever been to the point where your sole purpose in life is to find water um, because you're so thirsty. And I'm not talking about just getting up and going to the the kitchen and getting you know, a bottle of water out of the fridge. I'm talking about you're stuck somewhere. You're stuck on the side of the road. You're stuck in the woods. You're at a concert and you don't want to pay fifteen dollars for a drink or. You're at a sporting event and you don't want to pay $10 for a bottle of water. Whatever the situation may be. But when you're truly, truly thirsty, there's not much that will stand between you and that bottle of water or that drink that you want. Because you need that liquid, you need that fluid in your body for it to work. And it's interesting that, that God uses the need for water to make... The Israelites are his children and rely on him in the Old Testament. And it, you see it you see it multiple times. You see it as a kind of a theme of God using the needs of needs of his children to kind of maybe get through to them. But water is something that is so essential and so important that God used it multiple times. I've got two here that we're going to look at real quick. But there are other examples out there of how God uses water. To, to make his children rely on him. So, Hagar in Genesis chapter 21, uh, verses 15 through 21. The water in the skin was used up, and she placed the boy under the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of a bow shot. For she said to herself, Let me not see the death of the boy. So she sat opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. Then God heard the voice of the boy. Then the angel of the God called the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Arise, lift up the boy and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Then God opened her, her eyes and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the skin with her water and gave the boy a drink. So God was with the boy, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. He dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. So we see here, Hagar has just left um, Abraham. Uh, Sarah, or Sarah had asked um, Abraham to tell Hagar to leave. And if you know the story, it's kind of a messy situation there, but Abraham tells Hagar that she has to leave. So Hagar and, and her son, they pack up and they head out. And she runs out of water. She's desperate for water. She she is to the point where she's given up. And she puts 
she puts her son under a tree or under a shrub so she doesn't have to see him die. And that that's crazy to think about that she was to the point of of giving up that she could not find the water. But there comes God in. Saving her and making her rely on him for the things that she needs. And she was weeping. She was probably weeping to God, praying to God for him to, to deliver her from this. He made her rely on him. Also, we're going to look at Exodus 15. Now, we know that Exodus is, is we're talking about the, the Israelites leaving Egypt. They're getting out of Egypt. And we know that the 40 years that they spend in the, the wilderness is, is a rough time. They ups and downs and... and they follow God for a little while, and they don't follow God. And this, I mean, that carries out through the whole Old Testament. But we also, I mean, it is very prevalent in Exodus. Well, here in verse 22, they had just crossed the Red Sea. They had just gotten out. So, verse 22, so Mo, or chapter 15 and verse 22. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Morah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore they named it Marah. And people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them. And he said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam, where there were twelve wells and water and seventy palm trees, so they camped there by the waters. So we see here that the people, the children of Israel, had just gotten out of Egypt. I mean, they'd literally just crossed the the Red Sea and, and it's talking about how they're praising God and, and all these things but three days later they're, pray, they're praising God one day three days later they go without water and they're they're looking at they're looking what do we do we're, we're lost what what are we supposed to do we don't have water but God's like hold on I've got you I've got water for you you should have to follow my commandments. And he tells them, he said, if you follow my commandments and keep all my statutes, none of the diseases I've brought on the Egyptians will fall on you. He's also kind of saying there that if you follow me, I've got you. I'll take care of you. And we know that the Israelites probably didn't follow that. Or we know they didn't follow that for very long. So, we know the absence of water is drought. And the Israelites find themselves in a drought quite often with God. They find themselves apart from God. And that without Him, they're lost. They turn their back on Him often, just like we do. And when we turn our backs on God, we don't have that, that water that we need. Now, Ezekiel has an interesting passage of a vision that he had talking about the children of Israel. I'm going to read this and uh, discuss it a little bit, and then we can discuss it some more on the Zoom. But starting in verse 1, we'll go all the way through verse 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out of the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live then you shall know I am the Lord so I prophesied 
as I was commanded, and I prophesied. There, as, as as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling of the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked in the sinews, and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also, he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet exceedingly an exceedingly great army. And he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from, the, from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves, I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and, it, and performed it, says the Lord. So we look here, and it's a lot to unpack. It's a lot to, to read and understand. But basically, Ezekiel has a vision. And the vision is, he's walking through a valley, and... He's with God, and there are bones, dry bones, everywhere in this valley. And it's the children of Israel. And in verse 11 it says, He said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. So the bones are crying out, saying that we're dead, we're dry, there's nothing we can do. But God says, With me, anything is possible. With me, we can do it. And in a way, he, he gives them the water that they need to not be dry anymore. He lifts them up. He builds them up. He recreates them. And if you look at this, he's prophesying about the coming of Jesus in a way. He's prophesying about Jesus bringing back the water to God's people and lifting them up and building the people back up. And that leads us to our living water. So we'll go through these discussion questions um, on the Zoom. But if you want to, I encourage you to, to read over these in your families. Um, read over these and, and even text back and forth with some friends if, if you aren't with your family watching this. But you know that somebody else in the youth group is, is watching it and you want to talk to somebody about it. Um, I encourage you to text somebody, talk about it, um, bounce some ideas back and forth. Because when we go through it tonight, or when we go through it d during the Zoom, I would like to have good discussion and talk about this stuff in depth. Because I believe there's some pretty good questions here that can really get us thinking about our faith and about what we need to do to be better Christians. I'll talk to y'all later, and I hope y'all have a good day.